Okay, so when you um, kind of open it up, before you can uh, do anything, well, there's a there's a power cable around the back, and there's an Ethernet cable and a USB. But the the uh, Ethernet needs to be plugged in there, Ooh, and we have that switch set to Ethernet, and then the USB needs to be plugged in here. But they, unfortunately, they don't fit with the uh, with the front on. So that's that's the things you need to get started. After that, is just plugging the USB into your computer and uh, somehow connecting to the the network. It's a little bit complicated um, setting this mixer up because um, it's not just an audio interface; it's a mixer as well. So there are two things you're going to need going on. The first is your DAW, and the second is the XR software, which is how you manage it. So I've started the XR software um, and. I've connected to um, the Wi-Fi, or there's a there's an Ethernet cable in the back that you can plug into, and I've connected the USB as well. So the USB connects to my laptop and allows me to do the DAW stuff like recording, and then you need a network connection to do the managing. So there's band Wi-Fi, band Wi-Fi five, connected to those. Um, I automatically see that it gets an IP address for me and it finds the mixer and um, so I can choose that and click connect and then you get to choose do you want to bring the settings from the mixer back to the PC or send the settings from the PC to the mixer generally I prefer to just make the PC match whatever the mixer has so I do mixer to PC so then within the software you've got quite a few different modes so if you click mixer in the top left. This is your kind of basic um, mixer mode where you've got channels, you can mute, um, and you can see over here you're on main left and right. You can switch to any of the um, monitor outs by choosing in here. You can also see up here at a glance what channels are being sent to the monitors with these yellow bars. So this yellow bar alters the amount of this channel that's going to output number one, auxiliary one. Um, the other thing that you can do is go click channel here, which gives you more input on whatever or more settings for whatever channel is selected. So if I select the base channel, you can see this is where I adjust the gain. So I've got something plugged into the base channel. Um, and I can adjust the gain as needed and that will that will work inside or that will give us the right level inside the DAW as well. So um, when you set up your DAW if you've got the option you'll need to make sure that you get all of the inputs and outputs um, available to your DAW and then you'll create a new track for each thing you want to record and mine the base is on in8 so I'm just going to set up one track on in8 and when I arm it um, you can see it's receiving on in8 now because like let's say you want the metronome as well what's going to happen is people are going to um, they're going to be playing singing and listening through the mixer through the auxiliaries um, so they need to hear the sound coming back from the DAW into the mixer as well. So my DAW just sends on uh, out on kind of output one. So what I've done inside uh, the mixer is I've kept a channel channel seventeen, which I've called DAW return, and at the top here on the left I've changed this to be USB return I think there's more options in input so this is picking up channel 1 and I guess 2 I think it may be stereo um, from the USB so when I play if I hit play on Reaper which has got a metronome enabled and then go back to the XR software that's now flashing because of the metronome um, and you can put that channel up or down in people's ears. 
Now, there's something that you need to note, which is that you will want what people hear in their monitors to be just the things that you've got selected in your monitors here. But because you're monitoring what comes back from your DAW as well, they will automatically get this kind of mix back from your DAW unless you turn that off somehow. So the way I do that in Reaper is I turn record monitoring to off. And that means while I'm recording, don't monitor what's being recorded. And I don't need to do that because it's already being sent to the auxiliaries um, through what's happening here. So I think that's the key bit. There's, there's kind of gate EQ compression. None of that has an effect on what's actually recorded. Um, but the other thing is that once you're happy, if you click the snapshot button, you can save a snapshot. So I, I saved a snapshot for DAW recording, which just sets the, that last channel to be USB and what have you. And I saved that as 10. So you could click on that and load that snapshot, or you could save one. Um, and then it will automatically have the right stuff set up.